Hey folks, thought I'd make a quick video because I've received questions from several of my friends and others that I've showed some recent laser engraved pictures to. This process that I'm going to discuss was shared with me by a gentleman named Michael Bernasconi, a very talented uh, woodworker and carver, and he likes to share his knowledge with others but doesn't really like to get in front of the camera. So he shared this with a Mark Lindsay CNC group in a live meeting and I've been following his advice now for a few weeks and really happy with the results. Let me take a moment and show you some images that I've actually applied this process to and how they turned out. Then you can be the judge whether it's worth your time to watch this video or not. Hope you enjoy them. In the past, when I talked about using this program, it's called ImageR, I had several people tell me it wasn't necessary because Lightburn had all of the elements in it to make the perfect pictures. Well, after months and months of trying Lightburn, I maybe just don't have the eye or didn't have the talents, but frankly, I could not get the laser engraved images that I wanted to. And I was doing a lot with artificial intelligence, getting cool images, but then I couldn't transform them into something that was, in my uh, vision, really cool and good looking until I found this process that was shared by Michael. So with that, let's go right into it. The next step in the process is to get an image that you can process an image R to engrave on your laser. I normally get mine through artificial intelligence. You can get yours through websites, other pictures, scan images, no matter where they come from, they'll all work with the image R software. The favorite artificial intelligence image generator that I like to go to these days is Mid Journey. I have used Copilot and others, and that may change in the future, but I've got the process down pretty well in Mid Journey. So let's go over to Mid Journey software right now. We'll call it up. I have in my bookmarks an area where it takes me directly there, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm coming over here and I come into Mid Journey. I go to Create, which is my area, and here you can see several pictures that I've grabbed from Mid Journey that I might want to engrave in the future. So I have a huge selection there. And with that selection, then I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of those images. I'm not gonna go through how I do all of this, but if you want to find out how I decide what images I want to look at, let me know. And I will go ahead and uh, do a separate video on the prompts that I use and other ways that I use Midjourney. So here's a chimp image that I think is kind of intriguing. I like the way the eyes are. And so I'm gonna go ahead and download this image right here to bring into image R. I'll go ahead and put these prompts down here so you can see what prompt I use to get this one here. Now that I have the image downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and go on into image R. Just like before I have a bookmark that keeps things working easier for me. So I'm gonna go into image R and pull that up. And here's the image R uh, interface. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that picture in. I could either hit upload over here and go find it, or I can just drag it in, and I find it easier to drag in. So I'm going off screen here because I have multiple monitors, and I'm going to go ahead and call that picture up that I just downloaded. So here's the image I just downloaded from Image R. And I'm going to go ahead and take this one, and the first thing I want to do is go to resize so that it will be in the size that I want it and I want to go a 9 by 9 is what I've been cutting my images at and because it was fixed aspect ratio I only had to put 9 inches there I could use these buttons and I would need to change my DPI dots per inch for the image to one that works the best on my laser and mine is somewhere between 300 and 315 305 seems to be a good number so I'm going to go ahead and select that I hit OK so now you can see the original image is on the left on the right is the new image. So original image left, right the new image. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and make sure that I pick Cassia wood. Cassia wood, hit OK. So now that I've got that algorithm, which is the one I like the best, I'm going to go to one touch. I'm going to take off denoise and sharpen. And I'm going to come over here to color correction and I'm going to hit run on color correction. And what that's supposed to do is take out some of the color remnants that uh, may have been left over that didn't originally get taken out. You didn't see. Go to Gamma Adjustment 
And gamma adjustment, I like to have up around 1.8, 1.9. Let's try that 1.9. Okay, so that's looking maybe a little washed out to me. So I'm gonna take this down to let's say 1.5, let's say. Okay, that's good. Maybe I'll take it to 1.3. Now I go anywhere between 1.5 and uh, two on my pictures. Uh, this one is a lighter picture to start out with, so I'll use this number here. I think everything looks good at that point, so now I'll go back over to Material again, hit Cassia, Cassia Wood, hit OK. And now I'm going to come over to Preview with Material. And it defaults to Beach, I want to take it over to Birch, which is what I engrave on. And this is how it's going to turn out on Birch. So I like that, I hit close, and then I'm gonna go ahead and download a PNG, and I'll download a bitmap. And I use both of those on um, for various programs. So I hit close, and I'm at the point where I'm ready to go over to the Lightburn software. So let's go to the Lightburn software and check things out. Here we are in Lightburn software. The first thing I wanna do is import a picture and I can either import it through the, using this import button over here or I can just drag it in and I'm going to go to downloads and let's see date added and this should have been the latest one right here high resolution hit open and there's my chimp picture it has outputs turned off so you can't see it it should come in at 9 by 9 so let's take a look at it there it is, nine by nine inches, keep that locked. One of the things I like to do is I'm going to cut this picture out eventually. So I'm going to go all ahead and put a square box around it real quick for the same size. There we go. And that way I can cut the picture out when I'm done laser engraving it. I have a, a material library here and I'm pretty sure I've got the right setting up here for the image. But let's go to birch plywood down here and you see where i say 3d illusion image that's the ones that i use for my image r images as the starting point setting for image r let's see if that's right 126 16 and 0. so i don't think i have to apply it because i think i already have it there 126 16 and 0. so the image settings this is what's critical is you are not going to use the light burn settings you're going to use the settings that were created in image R. And so to avoid light burn from trying to further process this image, you have to put your proper, you have to put your proper speed, maximum power, that is something you're controlling. And then you have to put your pass through on. And pass through means it's gonna process it just like image R pro, uh, made it. So the key is that you have to experiment with these settings for your individual laser. And it doesn't seem intuitively obvious that you would have a min power of zero because I know on my laser, a Laguna EX, which is a 150 watt laser, normally if I do test, the laser won't even fire below 11% power, 10% power. So how can 0% power be correct? Well, it is. It must function differently when it comes to images. And I don't know the science behind it, but based on Michael, Bernasconi's research and what he learned is it actually works better the slower your speed you can get because you're going to get crisper lines and then the max power you have to figure out what that might be so that you don't get too dark or too light. Now if you get too light it's not a big deal because you can just run it over again. The challenge with running it over again of course is it takes more time and you will see here in a second how long this will take. Once again in review. I use 126, 16, and 0. Sometimes I'll use 16 and 1. Sometimes I'll change this around. I have done several test burns in the past to try to hone this speed and power for my own laser. Yours will be different depending on what kind of laser you have. That is the key. You need to experiment for a few pictures till you get it to the point where you've got it pretty dialed in. So we're going to hit OK. So we're set up for our image. The next thing we need to do is I just like to get a feel for how long this is going to take. 
Now I will tell you it gets a little confusing sometimes because when you go to pull up this image with the preview like I'm going to do right now, let's see what happens. Oh, I didn't select the image. Apparently I just selected the square. Oh, here we go. Select the image. Select the monitor. It tells me, hey, you know your image isn't going to fire. I say, well, it might not fire. So I say, yes, I know. And then when you go to look at the image, you go, wait a second, that image sucks. I don't want it like that. I'm telling you, don't worry about that. It's not going to look like the preview shows because this image is showing you dependent on what Lightburn, if it was processing the image, what it would think you had. So what I do this for is to come over here and look at the time. It'll be about an hour and a half to process this image. That's the, what I'm looking for. So I know this image will take about an hour and a half to process. And when it's done, it should be good. So hopefully my settings are right. This image is a little lighter than some of the other images I've done. Uh, but what I might find is that I actually have to burn this one more time. So let's go burn this image and see how it turns out. Okay, we're here at the laser and it's time to go ahead and laser engrave that chimp. Let's see how that turns out. I'm going to put it on time lapse so that doesn't take as much time uh, to watch and we'll see how it turns out. That's it. That's the end of the video. I'm not going to belabor this thing. I tried for a long, long time to get good images using the Lightburn software without using ImageR. And I found I just didn't have the touch or the ability to make all the adjustments I needed, and they never turned out as good as I wanted them until I followed Mike's uh, recommendations on the process that he used, and I've been doing that now for months, and my images are turning out good. So if you're doing it straight with Lightburn, that's terrific. But if not, maybe you can try this process out. Now, I'm not sure what the pricing is of ImageR these days, but I still think you can get like three or four images uh, a month for free. I know that I paid for the version uh, with the subscription, and I'm glad I did because I use it all the time for my own projects and clients' projects. So it's a multi-step process. I laid out every step along the way. They just now came out with a new part of uh, of image R, I can't remember what it's called, but it's called easy mode, I think it is. And that may work for you also. I haven't tried the easy mode yet. I've been using this other one for the last several months. The results are good. As you saw with my chimpanzee, you saw that one right there. Here's a gorilla and her baby. And that turned out really good. I'm really happy. And it's been working with both my uh, AI images and my scanned images with that. I hope you picked up something here in this video. I hope you're getting a chance to get out and make some chips and sawdust or 3D prints or whatever it is you'd like to do with your maker hobby. And uh, you know what I need. I need the support of all of you if you want my channel to keep going. So give me that like, give me the uh, comment, give me the share, and more importantly, subscribe if you uh, want to be made aware of future projects. I got a couple more videos that have already been, for the most part, recorded. The things have been made. I just need to release them. So once again, until we meet in this medium, hope your life is good and hope you're doing well.